All right, guys. Today on Code Explained, we're going to tackle radix sort. We've got an array here, and if I were to tell you, eager viewer, you've got to sort this array, but you can only use the digits themselves. How would you go about it? The most instinctive way is to first take the hundreds digits and to sort them into various buckets. Thirty-one and five both have a hundreds place of zero, so they go in the beginning half. Four one four. As a hundreds place of four, so it goes into the middle. And finally, eight twenty five and eight twenty two have the greatest hundreds places, so they move into the end. Here's where we start encountering a few problems. We have to keep a track of each bucket. Where does the first bucket start and end? The boundaries. It's only going to consist of the first and second element. We have to keep a track of those values. And let's say there were more elements present. Let's say it was thirty one, thirty two, and five. When we sorted the tens places, we'd have even more buckets, and we'd have to keep a track of even more values. Instead of doing this, it's a lot easier to go from right to left, Arabic style, to move from the units place to the tens place to the hundreds place. Let's see how and why that works. Here we've got our trusty array again. First, we're gonna tackle the units places, and we're gonna have to calculate the frequency of each digit. There are ten digits from zero to nine, and we can see that five occurs twice. Five is in the units place of eight twenty-five, and five is in the units place of five. So the frequency of five is two. The units place of eight twenty-two is two, so the frequency of two is one. The frequency of one is one, and the frequency of four is one. What are these values supposed to tell us? They're supposed to tell us the thirty-one is the smallest number. It has the smallest units place, at least. So it's supposed to go into the very first location. Then eight twenty-two. It has a units place of two, so it's supposed to go one after that. The number with a units place of four, that is four one four, has to be present after eight twenty-two, and eight twenty-five and five are going to have to occupy the next two places. That's why, in order to get the location values. We're gonna add each number to its predecessor. Now zero stays as zero. The number corresponding to one is going to become its value plus the previous value. That is one plus zero, which is one. It stays as one. The number corresponding to two will be its value plus the previous value. One plus one, which is two, and we continue to do so for each and every number. This is the new location table which we get. What does this table tell us? We start a loop from the end to the beginning. Normally, we move from left to right. I is zero to n minus one. Here, we're going to move from n minus one to zero. Now, why are we moving the loop from the end to the beginning? That will be understood in the next iteration. Now, the units place at five is five. If we have a look at the location table, this tells us that that's going to occupy the fifth position. If it's zero index, that's going to be position four. Let's just assume it's one indexed for convenience. Five is going to be present at location five in the final array, and now we've got to make sure to decrement its location so that there's no overwriting. So the number corresponding to five becomes four, and our loop moves down. The number corresponding to four is three. That tells us four one four is going to occupy the third position. Following this, we decrement its value and move our loop down. Thirty-one, its units place is one, and our table tells us that occupies the very first location. Thirty-one goes into location one. We decrement its count, and we have a look at eight twenty-two. Last digit two, it occupies the second location. Its count decreases, and when we move to eight twenty-five, we can really see why it's so important to decrease the location value. If we had not done so, eight twenty-five would have overwritten five, and we would have lost data. Since we decrease the value, eight twenty-five now goes into location four. This entire process is called counting sort. We've performed counting sort for the units place. We have to perform it two more times for the tens place and for the hundreds place. Now we've got to count the frequency. The number of occurrences of each digit in the tens place. Now you know the drill. We've got to add each value to its predecessor in order to get its location. 
zero stays as one. The location value of one becomes one plus one, that is two. Two becomes two plus two, which is four, and so on. Once again, we start a loop from the end to the beginning. Zero zero five has a tens place of zero. Our location table tells us that zero zero five will occupy the very first position. And don't forget to decrease the value by one. And here we see why it's so important to move from right to left. 825 and 822, they both have a tens place of two. That means we're going to be visiting two, two times. Whenever we visit a number more than once, the number we visit first is going to occupy a later position. And the number we visit second will occupy an earlier position because after we visit the number for the first time, we're going to decrement the count. In order to ensure that 825 occurs after 822, we have to move from right to left. And after this iteration is done, the tens places are going to be sorted along with the units places. After we place 825 into location 4, the value has to be decremented by 1. Now we move on to 414. It occupies the second position. 1's value decreases and 822 will occupy the third position. It will appear before 825. 31 will appear at the end. If you ignore the hundreds places, you can see that the units places and the tens places both have been sorted. After each step, an additional place value gets sorted. This means that after the next step, the units, tens and hundreds places will all be sorted, meaning our entire array will be in increasing order. Now let's perform the final iteration a little quickly. 31 goes into location 2, 825 into location 5, 822 into location 4 since the location count has been decremented, 414 straight into the middle and 005 in the very beginning. Our array is now in increasing or ascending order. We performed n iterations for each step and how many steps are there? The total number of steps is equal to the total number of digits in the maximum number. Here the max number is 822, which has three digits, which is why the total number of iterations is three into n. In general, the number of iterations will be k into n, where k is the number of digits in the maximum number. Let's have a look at the code. First, we take the input and we sort it. The output of this sort function has to be a fully sorted array. In that sort function, the first thing we do is identify the maximum number in the array. Say it has k digits, we've got to ensure that we perform counting sort k times. Place will tell us the place value we're currently sorting. So initially, we sort the units place. Then we multiply it by 10, indicating that in the next iteration, we're going to sort the tens place, then the hundreds place, and so on. As for the counting sort itself, this is where the bulk of our logic takes place. First, we're going to have a position array. It has digits from 0 to 9, so a total of 10 digits. This for loop, what does it do? It identifies the digit in that place. So initially, in the units place, we identify which digit is present and we increase its frequency. Following that, what we do is we identify its position by adding it to its previous value. Finally, let's just add an enter here. So finally, we run a loop from the end to the beginning, from n minus 1 to 0. We identify digit because this tells us which location to look for in the position array. We go to that location. Remember, that gives us a one indexed array. We have to make it zero indexed. So we subtract one and we place that element at that location in our result array. And a very important step, don't forget, is to decrement position of digit by one so as to prevent overwriting. Let's see if this works. Perfect. So you can forget the sample test cases part. Essentially what this program is telling us is if this is our input array, after step one, this is going to be our output. After we sort the units place, after we sort the tens place, this will be our output. And after we sort the hundreds place, we will get a fully sorted array. 